Portuguese colony of Mozambique. And until recently, he's been one of the few African-born players ever to make an impact on world soccer. But nearly 30 years on from Eusebio's heyday, times are changing. Transworld Sport recently visited Ghana, and over the next two weeks, we'll be finding out why this soccer-mad nation is suddenly producing a seemingly endless supply of future world-class players. The African Cup of Nations in January, and Ghana's stars display their wizardry. championship was bittersweet for Ghana. They played some great soccer and Abdi Bele was voted the tournament's best player. But he was suspended from the final which Ghana lost to the Ivory Coast 11-10 on a penalty shootout. success before. The national team have been champions of Africa four times. The great Stanley Matthews came here once and was crowned the country's king of soccer. Ghana next dreamed of becoming the first black African nation to qualify for the World Cup Finals. But that honour went to Zaire in 1974. In many ways, Zaire's dismal performance, among their three defeats, was this 9-0 thrashing by Yugoslavia, put African soccer back for more than a decade. European clubs and agents thought African players individually skillful, but tactically naive and unsuited for the tough demands of the European leagues. It took Cameroon's performances in the World Cups of 1982 and 1990 to convince them otherwise. Hey, hey. Today, 13 of Ghana's 22-man squad in Senegal are with European clubs. Nee Lamptey is at Anderlecht in Belgium. Ballet is at French champions Marseille. And Anthony Yeboah has been scoring goals like this all season for Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany. And while Ghanaians are moving to Europe to play, Europeans are travelling to West Africa to coach. Petra Gavrila from Romania is the head coach at Hearts of Oak. He says he's been astonished at the standard of play he's seen in the country. There is so much unexploited talent in the system. And I just can't believe this amount of talent exists and is untouched. I'm getting a great deal of satisfaction working with players as talented as this. The foundations for every footballer's skill must be learned early in life. In Ghana, boys as young as six and seven play in barefoot organized matches. It's an important occasion for the whole village who will come to watch these mini games. There are more than 5,000 registered players at 350 senior clubs in Ghana, and most of them learnt their skills in games like this.
It wasn't all that long ago that 15-year-old goalkeeper Ali Jara was playing those boys' games. But now he's a boy in a man's game. He plays for Hearts of Oak, and last year was in Ghana's squad that won the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Italy. Every Ghanaian dreams of the day Ghana actually reaches the World Cup finals for the first time. But Ali Jara has bigger ambitions. When I was a boy, I dreamt that at the age of 14 or 15, I would play in the World Cup. But I believe now that in three or four years, even in 1994, Ghana could win the World Cup. Ghana has a 16-team first division, and huge crowds turn out for most matches. The greatest rivalry is between Hearts of Oak from the capital Accra and Asante Kotoko, here in the white from the second city Kumasi. As we'll see in part two next week, it's a rivalry that knows no bounds.